working out with these ball hog gloves is changing everything, the whole dynamic of the workout. I mean, simple, you know, two ball dribbling drills, one ball dribbling drills, just are so much more harder when you can't grip the ball and when you can't really, sometimes even feel the ball, you gotta make sure you pound it. You kinda have, have to trust the handle. You know, you gotta make you, make you keep your head up, make you really work and intensify the workout. And I love them. My name is Coach Karan Godwin, skills trainer, author, and innovator. If you wanna become the best player you can be, the philosophy is simple. God first, work until. So, so what's it gonna take to get into the NBA? How what? Uh, you gotta put a lot of time, effort. Uh, you gotta keep grinding, man. start off my workouts with uh, ball handling. Um, I think that ball handling is key um, no matter your position uh, no, to leave, you know, plays the four. But uh, these days that, that four has, has kind of morphed into that three position where you have guys that have to handle the ball outside of the three point line. Um, we used to start off the same way um, with stretching uh, and then we throw on the ball hog gloves uh, which really gets you focused. Uh, they take away the natural grip of the ball, forcing you really to fight through that glove, you know, strengthening your hands and fingers. So one of my philosophies has always been to train guys to be basketball players, uh, shoot the ball, pass the ball, handle the ball, and not just, you know, train them for a certain position. Um, as you can see now, you know, with Golden State, you know, winning the championship, putting guys like Harrison Barnes and Draymond Green at the five, um, it's just become a positionless game uh, where it's really all about your skill set and creating mismatches on, on the other end. So when I'm training to leave, I'm keeping this in mind and we're just going hard. Holding up, catch the ball, swing through. After ball handling, we're moving on to his options off of the pick and pop. Um, as a big man, you know, especially in the NBA or even in the D League, um, there's a lot of situations where to leave is setting that screen, and he has to read whether it's best to roll or it's best to pop. And uh, situations where he's pop, he needs options. So this is what we're working on right now. Another thing I like to do during my workouts is um, just utilizing my iPhone, uh, being able to record guys and show them right away, uh, maybe at a water break or something, some of the things that we need to improve on, whether it be their form, their footwork, or, or just something that I saw um, during the workout.
Now we're going to get into our pump fake one dribble, jump shots, and take the ball hog gloves off. In this drill, we're simulating to leave getting the ball at the top of the key and not being able to swing the ball to the opposite guard and having to make a move. Now we're going to move on to dribble moves. Um, I actually found out last year the situations, you know, with that 24 second shot clock where you may have the ball and um, be put in a situation where you have to do something with it. And that may mean you taking, you know, two to four dribbles to be able to make your move and, and, and get a bucket. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, between the legs hesitation move right into your jump shot. and trainer there's no greater joy than seeing your guys uh, perform um, and do some of the things that you worked on and this was evidenced by to leave during uh, NBA Summer League where he played for the Cavs and uh, got in this very same situation where he passed the ball to the guard and, and was able to pick and pop and knock down a wide open jump shot. Get it, get it, see? <laughs> Hands ready, hands ready. There you go. Here you go, Lee. Brooklyn, time out. You gonna stay right here, make 10 kicks and shoot. And uh, 10, Some of the feedback that Talib was able to get from um, NBA GMs and scouts is that they wanted to see his um, 15 to 20 foot jump shot. Um, I think nowadays, you know, especially when you're as good of a screener as Talib is, you tend to cause uh, mismatches in, in situations where you can pick and pop. And um, this year, um, Talib is definitely looking forward to getting back at it. Uh, to the professional ranks and showing that you know, he can knock down that jump shot.
whether you're a guard or for it, um, I always teach my guys that being able to create space is just a premium. Um, that pertains to coaches and, and what they're looking for, uh, especially in a professional setting where the shot clock is winding down. You gotta be able to create space and get your shot off. So this is a great move, pump fake, jab step, uh, inside foot step back. If you follow my work, uh, one thing you'll notice is that my favorite move is the step back. Um, I like it because you can perform the step back, you know, going to the basket off of contact, you can perform it, you know, create space in the three point line, and, you know, anywhere where you can actually shoot the ball, you can actually utilize your step back. So it's my favorite move and it's something that um, I like my guys to work on and master. When I'm working out my higher level and professional guys, I like to work on their one foot step back as well. Uh, move made popular by none other than Dirk and the Winsky. But um, hey, this is a great move and also another way to create space. Hey. When it comes to scoring, uh, versatility is key. Um, being able to make a dribble move and score within two or three dribbles is just essential. Um, right now we're talking about going behind the back and just the step back. And um, this is just a great move so that it gives an opportunity if someone calls off the drive and go behind his back and then create space. In this drill, we're working on his face-up uh, jump shot, uh, being able to get that ball out of the post area and uh, face up your man and shoot right over the top of him.
you never really know how you're going to catch the ball out of the post. So I want to make sure that he can reverse pivot off either foot. Knock down that J. Now we're going to transition to Talib's runner or floater off one foot. Um, the floater was always a move that was difficult uh, for me uh, because you have to have a certain type of touch. You really have to practice his shot. Being that Talib is a um, forward, you know, playing at a professional level, NBA and D League, a lot of seven footers down there. So he has to be able to get his shot off even when he's driving to the basket. So in this drill, I'm making him attack the basket from different angles, using that soft touch, you know, finishing that shot with his running floater. So this is the end of this particular uh, work until uh, training session with Steve Zana. Uh, make sure that you follow him in his career. Uh, he's recently signed a non-guaranteed deal with uh, Oklahoma City. So he'll be going out there pretty soon. And um, we wish him the best of luck. But either way, you know, we're just going to keep God first and work until. How tough is it to go to the D League? Man, it's tough. Yo, you gotta be really mentally tough. The travel is not easy. And so you just gotta grind because you have you might have three games back to back to back and you travel the same day. So you really gotta be mentally tough and ready for the D League. So it's a it's another way to get in the league. So you just you can't give up, you just gotta keep working hard. Shout out to Coach Godwin for the workout. My name is Cody Q. Shout out to Coach Godwin for the workout. Uh, shout out to Coach Godwin for the workout. My name is Marcus Thorne. Guard at Raven Mary. And I'm working out with Coach Godwin. This is Coach Karan Godwin, professional skills trainer. Don't forget to log on to jumpstarthoops.com. Also, download my free app. It's in your Apple or Android device. And as always, God first, work until. Connect with me on social media at Coach Godwin and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment.